crafty friends, it's Caroline and I'm back today with a Sat Morn Makes, yay! Saturday Morning Makes is an open collaboration that is hosted by the amazing and wonderful and talented Jillian Norwood over at Jillian Norwood Designs. Now Jill has created this wonderful forum for artists and crafters to share whatever it is they're working on every Saturday morning using the hashtag SatMornMakes. Now you can click on that as a hyperlink and see all the other people that are posting and get inspired by the things that they're making, learn from them, share with them. It's really just a fabulous community that Jill has created. For today's Saturday Morning Makes, I'm gonna be making some Christmas tags. I know, I know, Christmas is over, but I got really sick for like the entire month of December so I still have a lot of Christmas crafting that I wanted to do and that I was inspired by. And so that's what we're gonna be working on today. And these are the tags I'm making. Aren't these so cute? I think they turned out beautifully. I have, I'm gonna be making six of them. I've made five. I'm gonna make the sixth one with you so you can see my process on this. I just love them so much. Now the paper on the front and the back, this pattern paper, that is from this collection here, which is an exclusive paper line from Country Craft Creations. And I will have, I'll have links for everything in the description notes below. Um, but this is just, oh, if you guys haven't tried Tammy's paper, you've got to hop on over there and buy some. There are several different lines that she has. All, all of them are amazing, but the quality of the paper is what just sends me. I mean, the, well, actually everything is just fabulous. It, the images are wonderful, but this paper, oh my gosh, you guys, once you start working with it, you're not gonna wanna go back. It's really beautiful. So I use some of these papers for my tags. Um, this sheet here, which, Look how beautiful it is. I use this one and then I use this paper here with these wonderful pine cones. And this was really my inspiration on what I wanted to, to make here because when I saw the pine cones on this paper, it then reminded me of this die set that I have from Honeybee Stamps. Now this is one of their lovely layer sets. Um, this is the Lovely Layers pine cone. I think this was their first Lovely Layer set. I'm not 100% sure, but it was certainly the first one I bought and I fell in love with them. I'm obsessed with them now. And as you can tell, there's just this kind of layered effect here with them. And I'll show you how they come together. It's amazing. In the die set, you get all the pieces for the pine cone. You get all these uh, pieces here for some of the greenery. And then you also get the pieces for this cute little bow. The tag itself was cut from these dies, which is a My Creative Time die set and it is MCT D312. It's the Tall Tag Frame Dies Layers. And I love this die set because the layering aspect is really close to the outer part of the die. You don't have a, a big fat reveal around there. It's just, it worked out beautifully. And what I did was I actually cut two of my base paper and then covered obviously the front and the back with the pattern paper. And all the papers that I used for these die cuts were scraps, y'all. The base of the tags was from the craft color of the artisan cardstock, and I store all of my scraps in the cellophane wrapping that it comes in with the papers themselves on my shelf. Now this is just for my artisan cardstock that I do that. I'll have a link in the description notes below for my craft room tour that I did a few months ago. And in that I show kind of how I store my other scraps in my craft room. I use two shades of green paper for the greenery. Now this is the olive green and the green of the artisan cardstock. I use the brown artisan cardstock to cut out all the pine cones themselves. And you guys, I cannot say enough wonderful things about this artisan cardstock. And then I use the burgundy artisan cardstock for the bows. I don't have any more pieces of my scraps to show you of that. I'm down to my last sheet of that one. <laughs> And then for the sentiment, I pulled out this Penny Black Sentiment stamp set again, and I do love this set. It is called Bright and Light, and if I can find it, I will also link it in the description notes below. So let's go ahead and make another one of these tags together. They come together beautifully, and they're a lot of fun. Now I've cut out all my little die cut pieces for my pine cone and the bow that is gonna go on there. And then I also cut out two of the matting pieces for the tag die and they are stitched. They're just so pretty. And then I cut out two of the base tags. Now you don't have to do this, 
but when you run things through a die cutting machine, you have one edge that's like smooth, that's the, you know, the top side, the cut side. And then on the bottom side, it's always just a little bit rough. And I wanted them to be very elegant and have a nice finish. So by cutting two of them and putting them together, I have two very smooth edges on there. So it's a little fussy, but I like it. And then for the um, tops, instead of using ribbon, I had this really pretty gold cording in my stash and I just thought it went really well with the papers and the whole feel of everything. So to begin, I'm gonna glue my two tag bases together, wrong sides together. And these tags of Emma's, these dies are just fabulous. I think you guys will really like them. I like the fact that they nestle together so closely. Yeah. The, the matting piece for the tags is you know, only like an eighth of an inch smaller than the tag itself. And you just get that really nice sharp finish. I think all of Emma's dies are great. And then once we've got those glued together, obviously clean up any glue that you may have seeping around the edges. I didn't have too much. And then we glue down our matting pieces, one on each side. And like I said, I just love these papers from Country Craft Creations. They're just so luxurious feeling. True confessions here, it is not Saturday morning in my household. It is well past dinner time on Saturday evening, and we've just had a really busy day. My son Eli had a sleepover last night and was invited to go see the Oklahoma City Thunder game. That was his first NBA basketball game, and he had so much fun, and the Thunder won, and so it was a really great time for him. And then when he got home today, we had all sorts of errands to run and kids that needed to go to birthday parties. And it's just been one of those crazy busy Saturdays around here. And I'd been thinking about what I wanted to make all day. <laughs> and I'm glad that I finally got home and am able to play in my craft room a little bit here with you guys. So once we have all of that glued down, it's just, it's already just adorable, right? I want to go ahead and stamp my sentiment on here. And I've already positioned my stamp where I want it to be um, using my Misty. And I love my Misty. If you guys don't have one of these stamping tools, I highly recommend them. They're fabulous. And so I've got that in place. The ink that I'm using is a Catherine Pooler Designs ink and it's called Over Coffee. And it's just a really pretty color. I thought it showed up beautifully on this paper, on this um, Country Craft Creations paper collection here. And I'm giving it two stamps just so that it's nice and crisp and really shows up on this paper. I don't have one of those nice little, you know, tools that you run over <laughs> your stamped images with, so I just use my sleeve, it works fine. And then I will clean this up in a bit. And once we've got our image stamped here, I wanna go ahead and punch a hole and add some grommets. Now, um, if you've seen anything on my channel before with these, you know that I like to use the more, you know, traditional old fashioned tools and grommets. I don't use the crocodile. The crocodile and I have a hate, hate relationship with each other. I can't get that thing to work for me for my life. So I, I do use that. I'm gonna show you how I do that. So I like to put down a cutting mat just to protect my other mat because sometimes I get a little aggressive when I start hammering these holes through here. And when you buy one of these grommet kits, it's gonna come with a base setting tool and a top setting tool. And it's also gonna come with a hole punch. And I love these little hole punches. They're really nice to have on hand too because they fit in places that maybe your normal hole punch wouldn't fit. So like I could punch a hole right in the center here when my hole punch might not reach that far. For today, we're obviously gonna go to the top to where the tag is. And I'm just gonna try to find a center point, place my uh, punching tool on the spot that I want to punch the hole through, take my hammer, and I've got a, you know, I've got a big, I got a 16 ounce hammer here. <laughs> so you may not need one this big, but I like it. I don't have to make so many strikes with it. And I'm gonna give it about two or three whacks. And then once that's done, I like to, take this little pokey tool, and this is just one I bought from Dollar Tree, and I like it because it's got this angled little edge, so I can really get in there and kind of dig that portion out. Make sure you clean that out um, pretty soon after you've punched the hole. In my case, I just applied the glue on this, and so I don't want that to end up sticking in there with the glue. And then once I've got my hole, and it looks really great, I'm gonna take one of the grommets, the, the pretty side of my grommet here, and I'm gonna place it in this setting tool. Now there's different types of setting tools. This one has you place it in there. I'm gonna take the right side and place over that. 
And then one of the washers that comes with the kit, you place it rough, rough side up or kind of the curved side up. Then you take the top piece of setting tool and give it another two to three wax. And that's it, you guys. You have a perfectly placed, perfectly smooth grommet here. And I just love the finish of it. All right, I'm gonna put my tools away. And now it's time for us to go ahead and start putting together our little decorative element. I've got all my pieces for my Lovely Layers pine cone here. And as you can see, they come in, you know, decreasing sizes or increasing if you go this way. And on all of the Honey Bee Stamps Lovely Layers die sets, you begin with the largest piece on the bottom and then you start building. But I wanna give this a little more dimension so the bottom piece I'm not gonna do anything with, but on all these other pieces, I'm gonna take my bone folder and I'm just gonna sort of give it a little bit of a, a curve on the back side of it. Just kind of bring it around like that. So I'm gonna go through here and just curve them all. I wouldn't say just a little bit, it's a pretty aggressive curve, but they're gonna lay down more flat when you put them together, so it's okay. And so for these four, I'm gonna curve the large piece and the little tiny piece, I'm not gonna bother with curving. Go ahead and give these a little, little bit of dimension there. And then beginning with the second to the largest piece, I'm gonna take a little glue on the back side and just sort of come up almost like a triangle shape there with my glue. And it's so simple. You just line up the edges on the base of it with the one below and get it positioned just right and then I want to just press it out a little bit, okay? You take the next largest one, do the same thing. I'm going to come along the base and then just sort of come up to a point. Line it up again with the one below and give it a little bit of a burnishing, okay? Next one, same thing. Just a little triangle of glue down here. And as you can see, I've still got some pencil marks on here. I really did use all my scraps, you guys. I'm gonna go ahead and put that down. The next one, this tiny little one here, just put some on the base of it, glue it down. And then the last one is this little teeny tiny one and we didn't curve it any, I'm just gonna place it down. just like that. Doesn't that look great? Look at all the dimension it has. I think it looks awesome. And now we're gonna move on to our bow. Now, same thing with the bow. I'm gonna take my bone folder and beginning at the center of the bow, I'm just gonna curl it out. Same thing, beginning at the center of the bow, curl it out, okay? Put a little glue on the back side in the center and take one of these little ends and place right over it. Just pinch it for a second or two, just like that. Put some glue on the top of the one you just glued down. Take the opposite end, place it down. Just pinch it for a second or two, just so that glue can sort of take hold there. And then this little tiny rectangle piece here has two little score marks that it creates when it goes through the die cutting machine. So hopefully you guys can see that. It's got these little score marks there. We're gonna fold them over on themselves and just kind of get that ready to fold and then open it back up and I'm gonna put glue all over the back side of it. And you take it front side down in the center of that little piece and then wrap the two ends around and that'll give you kind of the center portion of your bow. Isn't that great? And then this little piece here is for your tails, for these little tails that hang down. And I believe it's made to just be folded on that score line and sit like that. But again, I'm weird. I don't like the back side of anything that's gone through the die cutting machine. So what I've done is I just cut it along the score line. And then on the one next to it, I just give it an opposite cut. So it's, it's like this, and I want that angle to match up with the other one. So I'm gonna cut this little kind of pie piece out of it, if you can see that. I just cut that off of here, okay? And then these two, I'm just gonna match up the straight edges, just like that. So I'll take one of them, doesn't matter which one, put a little glue on it up there by that cut edge, and then line the other cut edge up with it. Give it a little squeeze. Again, cleaning up any glue. And then we've got the tails. So I'm just gonna come along the back here with a little glue 
take my tails, kind of drag them in, check to make sure I like where they're positioned. I scooch them around if I need to. And once I've got them where I like them, I'm just gonna kind of press down from the backside, make sure I've got good contact. And there we go, we've got a cute little bow. Isn't that great? And so now all we need to do is add some greenery to the back of our pine cone and just, you know, just like the way it kind of peeks out around there. I use two shades of the green. I use the green artisan and then I use the olive green artisan. And I felt like it just gave it a really nice, you know, dimension for that. Now these are rather large. So what I've done is I've gone through here and trimmed them out. So like this piece here is a nice little bit of little sprig. This piece here is a nice little sprig. And then that one there. So I've got three out of one. And then let's take this one sort of cut it in half and maybe use a couple of these. And now I'm sort of just building up some little greenery, you know, sections, right? So I'm taking one of these and maybe lay it on top of there. Actually, as I'm looking at it, I think it would look better behind. Put a little dollop of glue just sort of tack it down like that. There we go, I think that looks good. Maybe take another one. And then that one's just gonna kind of shoot out this way, maybe down a little lower. There we go. And then put glue on the front side of your little arrangement. And then I'm just sort of tacking it down, okay? So like if, I feel like it looks good about like that. And then we'll take another little set, layering them up. And my daughter, Bella, and I are getting ready to watch a movie together. Um, she's watching, I don't even remember what it was. I think it's sort of like The Princess Diaries, but not, I don't know. <laughs> We're going to go in there and watch that. So if you hear her coming in here in a minute, I think she's getting ready to come in and see if I'm finished yet. <laughs> which I'm almost finished. There we go. And then we just have this nice little sprig of some greenery. Oops, we wanna put the glue on the front side of it. And then I'm just tucking it behind on this other side so that we've got some of it sticking out. And as I'm looking at it, I feel like I need a little bit more over there. So let's cut into this one. Oops. There we go, put a little glue on this. And I kind of like doing it this way because then I can sort of see where does that need to go. And that looks good, about like that. There we go. And then flip it over and all along the backside, all over, just, I'm not putting glue on these little bits that are sticking out. I'm putting glue on the bits of the greenery that are behind the pine cone and then glue it all up here, just like that. And then we're gonna place it on our tag. And I don't mind that some of the greenery is hanging over the sides of the tag. In fact, I kind of think it looks nice that way. Straighten it up some, press it down, make sure I've got good contact. Just like that. And then we're just gonna attach our bow. And I'm gonna put glue all over everything I can on the backside of this bow because it's dimensional and it's going on top of a lot of things that are dimensional, so I really want it to stick down. So at first, these little tails are gonna stand up because I gotta sort of tuck them down here in a minute, but I'm going inside of the loops of the, of the bow with my bone folder and really pressing it down and then I'm gonna come back over and press down my little tails. Oh, I like it, I think it looks great. And now we're gonna take our little bit of twine or if you are using ribbon, whatever you wanna use, and it'll go straight through from the front side of your tag. Pull it on through and then stick your tails through the loop like that and we'll just tighten it up. 
And then I'm gonna use a lighter to singe off these little ends. You can use art glitter glue, you can use fray check, just whatever you're comfortable with, but I, I don't have the patience to let things dry, so I do a lighter. But be careful if you use a lighter because it, it will flame up a little bit on you. And then once that's done, we're finished. Doesn't that look great? I am so happy with the way they turned out. And I now have all these tags ready for next Christmas. <laughs> and wouldn't it be great to put these on maybe a little a batch of the, the pine nut cookies, the pignoles? Those, oh my goodness, it would be so good. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Those so. little Italian pine nut cookies, the butter cookies, they're so good. Um, I think it would be really cute to use these on those or really just for anything. They're so festive. I love these papers, like I said, from Country Craft Creations. I think it's just adorable. The collection, again, is from Once Upon a Christmas, and I will have the links for everything I use today in the description notes below. And I just had a little thought. This is kind of a small business Saturday morning makes. And what I mean by that is I use the dies from Emma over at My Creative Time. I use the papers from Tamara's Country Craft Creations. And the other dies here for the pine cones, those are from Honey Bee Stamps. And I think it's really great to be able to support small businesses. I'm passionate about that. So that's kind of a nice little connection too. All right, that's what I've got for you guys today. I hope you're having a fabulous Saturday. I hope that you're being kind to yourselves and I hope you're finding some joy in your journey. Thanks so much, everyone. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.